matter what, you should make an API. Well, I'll rewind back even a little bit more. Um, we, so the, the tradition in tech companies is you start a product company, you build off this successful product company, and then y you decide to like bolt a research lab onto it. And this has worked out sometimes quite well, like Xerox Park, sometimes quite badly, like some of the more modern companies. Um, but we are the only example I know of where we started with a really well-run research lab and then bolted on a badly run company uh, later. Um, and it was like four and a half years in to OpenAI. And we, we hadn't started thinking we were ever gonna make products, but eventually it became clear that because of the scaling laws and the amount of capital we needed, um, we were gonna have to go build a really big company. And so you need to have a product to have a company. And we had this model called GPT-3, and we were trying, I like was turning up the urgency on the company to figure out a product, and we just couldn't. It wasn't good enough. It was cool, but it wasn't good enough to make something that worked. And I remember that Paul Graham had this advice that always stuck with me, which is you should always make an API. No matter what, you should make an API. It's just there's like good stuff will happen. So out of ideas to make a product, we said, well, let's like crowdsource this to the world, and we'll put GPT-3 into an API, and maybe somebody will figure out something to do with it. The whole world figured out exactly one thing to do with it. The only thing that made money with GPT-3 was these copywriting applications. However, we had this thing called the playground where you could like test prompts and see what you were gonna get back. And that was sort of the sleeper hit. People, some people, not a lot, but some people would just chat with that thing all day. And it was before we had figured out RLHF and before we had even GPT-3.5, so it wasn't very good. But there was like clear user signal that people wanted to talk to the models. and given that that was the only thing besides copywriting that had real traction, we said, well, maybe like this is just the product we should build. So we started doing some research to make the models easier to chat with and you didn't have to do these like complicated prompts. Um, and we had a better model. And then we decided we would put out a chat interface. And, and so we almost held it, but we put out this preview where you could just chat about whatever. And another interesting learning is we had this like testing group of it. And very few of the users, this is back when the model was really bad, very few of the users uh, actually stuck with it. Retention was atrocious. But for the users that did retain, they, their usage like increased over time. And, and again, we almost didn't launch it because of that. And, and an important learning that I've like later reflected on is if you have a product that has any retention at all, you're actually in really good shape. If it's 5%, that can be totally fine. Um, the default is almost always all the way down straight line to zero.